Welcome to Sartor TV. I'm Kara Kastanova, and today I'm here to speak with Jim Metzger, who is the founder, CEO, and principal owner of the Whitmore Group. Thank you so much for coming today. I know My you're busy, pleasure. but I know My you have pleasure. a lot of knowledge to share. Did you have any early mentors, and what did you learn from them that you still use today? Well, how far do we want to go back? Are we talking childhood? Are we talking about from, uh, Anyone from the start of my business career? Anyone that sticks out in your mind. Career? Anyone that stands out that really had an impact on you. Yeah, I would say coaches. I, I, I grew up uh, playing competitive sports from an early age, uh, probably six, seven years old. I played organized football, basketball, and lacrosse, baseball. So some of the coaches that I had as a kid uh, stand out in my mind. Uh, John Daly was one uh, football coach uh, for about five or six years. He was a great uh, leader. He was really passionate about the game, and I think we played at a very high level, considering that we were just kids. Right. And then uh, a, ba a basketball coach, uh, also around that time, seven, uh, maybe uh, up until I got to eighth grade, I had a, a basketball coach that uh, was passionate about the game, but was a great, uh, I thought, uh, a, a great uh, coach for kids at that level and kind of inspired me. Played with us during practice and right. uh, he was very athletic and, and uh, was just a great leader and a charismatic person. Well, did you think, like, how does that translate to, to what you learned to, that you use today? Like, for example, was there something they said or they just made you feel like you could accomplish anything? Like, was there something about these specific coaches that sort of you could reflect back and say, wow, they did shape my life in a certain way. I think they encouraged me, you know, they, they, they gave a lot of encouragement. I, I was, uh, 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 probably I peaked a little early, maybe nine or 10 years old. Although I had some success in high school and college, I was uh, February, I was born in February, so I was older for my grade. And uh, I think that was an advantage. But I just developed physically and, and athletically uh, very early on, so, uh, but I think these coaches were not only were they special for uh, the most talented or the most athletic kids, I think they were just across the board uh, good coaches and, and good leaders for the young people. What kind of advice that a, an athletic coach would give, say a classic athletic coach, that you think is good advice that would apply to someone in business or someone trying to start their own company? Are they st uh, coaches that stress fundamentals and, and work ethic and uh, preparation? I think all of uh, I think all of those are uh, disciplines that transcend sports to life and business. Can you talk about your philanthropic activities and why you are so into giving? For many reasons, and frankly, uh, to be candid and painfully uh, honest, uh, uh, some of it is is actually uh, a brand uh, building. Uh, particularly, we give a lot in the New York metropolitan area to uh, a, a number of uh, academic institutions that were also happen to be my alma maters in high school and uh, college, Hofstra University and Half Hollow Hills. I've supported both of those. Right. Uh, academic institutions in, in, a, in a significant way. Uh, I derive a lot of satisfaction and, and um, I appreciate uh, being a part of the school and, and staying connected to young people in education, but I also get my name out there and I think uh, uh, it's a great way to uh, uh, build uh, uh, public support. And again, we do a lot of business in those areas too, so it works. I, I think I think we you know we, 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 I've certainly accomplished a lot right. by doing so right. beyond beyond just the support uh, for uh, whether it's the academic institutions or big brothers and big sisters uh, the American Heart Association the YMCA uh, Boys and Girls Club of America uh, I certainly uh, enjoy uh, and derive a great deal of satisfaction from uh, supporting uh, th those terrific uh, organizations. But uh, simultaneously, I'm building my brand and uh, strengthening uh, my company by right. doing by doing so. Interesting. No, I mean I understand. You know, a lot of people they always like, oh, Jim, James. Like they know your name. I, I don't know if it's because it's on a lot of different buildings. Um, I know you donated 1.5 million to Hofstra. Yes. And then they put your name on the stadium. Was that a good right. uh, marketing investment? <laughs> sure. I mean, uh, I mean, a lot of people well, talk about it. Well, it seats 13,000, right. uh, north of 13,000, the stadium, and they, they play soccer there, lacrosse. We played football, but uh, Hofstra jettisoned football a few years ago. 
Uh, but uh, no, I, I think it's a great, uh, you know, it's been a great vehicle uh, for me and for my company. Right. And I've also, uh, you know, I have a lot of close relationships with a lot of players, former players, the coaching staff, and the administration as well. So, right. you know, I think I've accomplished a lot by doing that. But again, it was, they're, they're, for me, they're, they're investments. I haven't, uh, right. no, I, I haven't I sold my company. I haven't liquidated the bricks and mortar, so to speak. Uh, so uh, they, they were, they were uh, sacrifices uh, financially and... Uh, and, and, but I think in, in a variety of ways, they've, they've really paid off. So when you speak about branding, when, what, like, what, do you, what did you say your personal brand is? That you really feel like you branded yourself? Well, I, I think uh, you know, through, through uh, uh, the philanthropy and, and athletics, uh, we, we, we've done a lot uh, at the Whitmore Group. I, I think we, uh, uh, we, we've, um, we've gotten our name out there. and. I, you know, we talk about lacrosse, and and uh, that that sport is uh, comprised of uh, uh, a lot of uh, upper middle class, uh, uh, upper class kids from um, you know strong communities, and and those are communities which uh, you know are buy our products, and and uh, uh, we're certainly interested in in targeting those markets. So, kind of, it works well uh, for right. us, and I think. Uh, some people want to support, uh, you know, uh, 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 give back uh, to us right. or try to uh, give us an opportunity uh, to, to and, 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 and in a way it's to say uh, thank you to us for the support that, that we've given right. the community or, and, and right. you know, their kids or their, their children. Could you share three parallels that you think that a successful sportsman and a successful businessman have? I think uh, the desire, uh, discipline, and dedication. Desire. They just happen to all start with a D, but I think, uh, I think uh, sports off, you know, not only are fans passionate about sports, you know, the athletes are passionate. So I think they have a strong desire to be successful, an intense desire in many cases to be successful. Uh, a, a discipline is a very important uh, aspect of sports, as you know. Uh, as a, as a former uh, champion uh, boxer, but yeah, I mean you have to be dedicated. You have to uh, in, in athletics. There, you know, competition is uh, usually ferocious. The higher you go up, I mean, if you're talking about, uh, uh, for example, uh, college lacrosse or Division One lacrosse, obviously football and basketball or world championship boxing, uh, you're it's the best of the best. So uh, dedication is, is um, now they're, they're all connected. I think, you know, without the desire, there, there are very few athletes that are so talented at the highest levels that don't have an intense desire to be great uh, or uh, aren't, aren't, aren't disciplined. Uh, right. or, or, or aren't de dedicated. I mean, it's hard to be that. You know, look at Michael Jordan in basketball, uh, considered by many the greatest player of all time. I mean, I don't think anyone had greater uh, desire, discipline, and, 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 or dedication. I mean, he he worked on his game incessantly, and right. uh, you know, he 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 uh, was the most intense competitor I've ever seen. So, so, really so I think in business it's the same. Uh, you know. Um, you, you uh, to, to succeed, to compete, you know, and, and, and often I've said, you know, that's the real game is to go out and earn a living or, or try to compete uh, at the highest levels in business uh, is, is, is a, um, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're competing against uh, other uh, uh, business uh, folks within your space for, you know, you're, you're trying to take uh, food out of their mouths. Right. I mean, that's the way I look at it. You know, so uh, you know, you're you're uh, you're fighting for the same uh, you know for right. the same thing. So, you know. so if you had to choose one or the other, which is more relevant to success, uh, drive or talent, determination or talent, raw talent. I would say raw talent. I mean, if you want to, the best, I, I, I cite the same example throughout my entire life. Uh, if you want to be an Olympic sprinter and win a gold medal in the 100, 100 meter now, when I was a kid, it was the 100 yard dash. Uh, you have to get out of bed uh, in the morning as a, as a 9 3, 9 4 sprinter in the, in the 100 yard dash, uh, dating myself. But, you know, you can 
if you don't have the raw talent, you could practice seven days a week for eternity and you're never, you know, <laughs> you, don't, you don't even have a remote shot right. at, at succeeding. You have so, no shot. So I think talent, is, it starts with talent and, and, and what separates people is, is those talented uh, individuals, you know, who have that intense desire, who, who are dedicated and have the discipline to refine the starting, you know, they're starting with so much more than most, but they have to refine it and develop it, and then they compete against the the best of the best, and 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 then. Uh, but I think talent is is still, uh, you know, in most cases, I I I think it's talent. I, I would say it's different in business. It's it's really in business, unlike uh, athletics. Business uh, is more about. Uh, desire, uh, uh, discipline, dedication. I think uh, you. you uh, I think sports is um, there's uh, there's a there's a there's a, an element to sports that has to do with just uh, athletic ability uh, and athleticism. That uh, you know. I mean, for example, Larry Bird in basketball. He's one of the all-time greats, and he's not necessarily the most you know agile. He can't jump. Uh, he's not fast. Right. Uh, he, he, but there's a guy that, that uh, developed one of the greatest shots of all time, and it, it was, he, he's so strong. Uh, his IQ, as they, uh, they like to talk about, his basketball IQ is genius. And, but he, he, worked at it, um, uh, right. he worked at it incessantly, and, and he became, uh, although he didn't have the athleticism, the agility, uh, the vertical uh, 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 jump, a leap that uh, many other great players had. He 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 surpassed virtually all, almost all of them right. in terms of greatness and and his success. Well, then, it, so you're saying it's an it's sort of a raw athletic ability. If there was one raw attribute for a successful businessman, like one thing, besides, I, I don't know what you would call it. What would you say? Like that is that they're born with. Well, I guess there 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 are uh, certain. Uh, Instincts, um, uh, you know. I, I think I think the the basic ingredients for a successful uh, business person is, uh, you know, you have to have a certain a level of intelligence, and um, but you don't have to be a genius. Uh, uh, I, I think you have to uh, be reasonable uh, uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, your 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 approach. I think a lot of people get themselves into trouble because they they they're not reasonable. They they're not working. You know they're going outside uh, the reality of their given uh, situation. Uh, they want uh, too much success too soon. I think again in business, if you if you if you if you if you have a real strong desire and passion, uh, you can achieve that over time if you work if you work hard enough. Uh, it's not the same. It doesn't have the same demands that, that sports has in, in terms of, of what you start with. So, um, I, and I, I think that's the beauty of business is that uh, uh, almost everyone with the right with the right if you have the right work ethic and 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 ambition, mm -hmm. and you're willing to uh, invest long term in yourself. Um, you know, you, you have a lot of opportunity, there's a lot of opportunity out there. Would you say that athletic, being an athlete in high school and in college is good preparatory, is good preparation for being in business or not so? What do yes, you feel? Yes, I think absolutely. Why? You know, I, well, as we, you know, you know that I've drawn a lot of parallels from sports to business, from the sports world to the business world, and I think, um, you know, the competition, uh, try, you know, you you want to win in business too. You want to uh, you want to beat your competition, and really, that's what business is all about. So, the the um, that that conditioning that that we have uh, as an as an athlete um, is you know it's really it's all about preparing uh, for an event, for a game, for a match, um, and and working working out, working hard. Practicing and in business, it's uh, you know it's sim I, I would say it's it's quite similar. You you are constantly uh, competing, uh, vying for an account or for uh, business uh, against your opponents are either the incumbent, uh, the person in, is doing business with your um, with your with, with with your target, you know, whomever you're targeting, and so you want to make yourself. Uh, uh, 
more appealing or you know you 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 have to find ways to uh to replace uh whatever you know whatever business whatever business you're in whatever industry or space uh it's all about trying to uh win over that client or right uh, so it's about or, winning or be, yeah it's about winning it's about competing it's about competing it's about competition what would be training per se like always you're always training when you're an athlete what, what are you always doing to train to be successful and to keep growing as a business person? Well, knowledge. I mean, research. Uh, educate yourself. Stay. Uh, uh, I, I think um, now more than ever, uh, technology impacts what we do. And even, um, you know, we have to try to read the tea leaves, see what, what's, com what's coming around the corner. Um, so I think uh, educating uh, yourself, reading, uh, research um, are, are all very important. You're award motivated because you won a lot of them. So clearly, I'm sure you, you can, but do you consider yourself an award motivated person? A lot of successful people are. And are you motivated by winning business awards like you were in sports? Like, does that? No, I think that's just a um, um, collateral uh, success. Uh, it's more about uh, you know, winning, winning, uh, winning dollars. I think. Uh, right. <laughs> I think. I think uh, everything else follows. I. I, I think that the uh, the real success is is, uh, um, is 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 when you uh, land a deal or do business uh, with someone. You you earn more. I think right. what you can do with that money is quintessential or is is important. Um, and I think therein. Uh, lies the great uh, the greatest prize or awards is is to be able to share your success with with other people and and in some cases in my case my family and right. and, uh, and and that's what right. that motivates me and and I think uh, um, and, I, and I think that's the that those are those the awards that are related to the philanthropy and the giving back are are the ones I, I appreciate most but I will say the industry awards too. Are, are uh, gratifying and and I think they enhance the uh, the image and the and right. the brand of the company too. Right. So they're important as well. Do you use any classic athletic motivational tactics to push yourself? Self talk mantras, visualization, things like that. Sure. Which can you give us a specific example? Maybe of a mantra you have, or it's what you envision in your head. Well, I, my, my tagline on my website, my, my personal website, is uh, everything I need to know about business I learned on the sports field, which is a, which is a hyperbole. I mean, that's, um, I'm, I'm, that's a bit of a stretch, but I certainly learned a lot on the sports field and um, about, you know, I, I, I found out when I didn't prepare or when I wasn't ready or I wasn't in top shape, you know, I paid for that or I, you know, I suffered the consequences. Right. I, I think um, um, you know there there were many times in my athletic career uh, where I spent a, an awful lot of time working on certain aspects of my game, whether it was basketball or lacrosse or football, and uh, then uh, you know had success in, in, in a game when it counts, and uh, was uh, just reaffirmed that that practice and that uh, that 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 focus and attention to uh, uh, my skill set, you know, really uh, pay dividends for me. So I think in business, again, you know, preparation for to make a presentation or a sales call, it's just so important to, to be prepared. To give a speech is the greatest uh, example. That's the quintessential example. Uh, uh, make a speech uh, once and you learn a lot, you know. Uh, make, make, make a speech a, thou you know, a thousand times and, and you're a genius because you, you don't want to get, you know, it's all about being prepared. I don't, uh, even the most talented orators, um, I, I think a former president, I won't name names, but, you know, he was, uh, he was a tremendous orator and I think, you know, it, 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 I, I've, I've made many speeches uh, whereby uh, people thought that I was uh, speaking extemporaneously and in reality, uh, you know, I, I, I spent hours upon right. hours planning and preparing. Usually, right. it usually, the speech usually doesn't come off real, real well if, if you take the uh, approach to uh, wing it. It, right. it, it doesn't sound uh, the same. Someone that has really, uh, is, is keenly aware of his audience or her audience 
and um, is connecting with those folks and making a really fluent speech. It usually, you know, has really, um, you know, has, has made an investment in, in that speech and right. is a beginning, a middle, and an end. Right. And they kind of flow. And, right. and again, it's all about your audience and, and the message you're trying to convey or should be conveying to that audience. Is there a sports personality you know besides yourself that turned out to be a great businessman? And Gail Sayers. Gail Sayers. Uh, one of the greatest football players of all time as, a, as an insurance executive and an entrepreneur. Oh, really? Yeah, he was, a, you know, a lot of people saw Gail Sayers running uh, his highlights in Brian's song in that film, uh, uh, a pretty, uh, uh, pretty well-known film. And Sa Gail Sayers was, um, was a poetry in motion uh, runner on the football field, and but he was a, he 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 was a, he's a successful businessman. Um, there are many. Roger Staubach, the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, was was right. a tremendous businessman. Even you know, Ir I believe Irvin Magic Johnson is 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 a very successful businessman. Right. Um, and what uh, quality is it that they have? That you know, a lot of athletes come out of the athletic career and they just go, they'll either lose a lot of money or you just they won't really do much. What is it about these athletes that, or what quality is it that makes them successful afterwards in business? I think, you know, these guys were, uh, I, I, I think they, they tasted, uh, you know, the, the, the drink at the top of the mountain. They, they, they achieved great success and they wanted to perpetuate it. They, right. I think they, 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 were, they were very ambitious. Uh, they were great athletes, uh, the ones that I mentioned. And I, I think that, uh, they, they, they wanted to transcend their success in sports to uh, other, other areas in their lives. And, and I think they, 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 were, they were probably uh, highly intelligent. They're uh, highly intelligent. And, but I think it has to do again with their, you know, they want to be successful. They want to uh, uh, achieve. And uh, uh, it wasn't going to end with athletics. It, you know, they, they, um, they they had the uh, and uh, I think they had the, the ambition and and the work ethic and um, I think I think I think a tremendous desire to be successful right. off the field too. Do you make small definitive goals goals daily or look to more long term lofty goals as a personal strategy? And do you feel like this differs in athletics and business, like making those small goals today? Or making like big goals, or which type, which is your style? I, I, I think both, but I, I, I think both are important. I think I make small goals all the time. I, I maintain, I try to stay physically fit. I, I've often told uh, of, uh, intimate friends that, you know, putting on a suit in the morning is like putting on a uniform. For many years in my 20s, right. I, I did that. I put a business suit on. I weighed myself every day for 30 years on a, on a hospital scale. And uh, I just I maintained the same weight for 30 years. I have the first suit I bought in 1983. Yeah, yeah at Hofstra University. Style? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not. It's bell bottoms now. <laughs> big, uh, but I can I wear I can wear it if I you know I wanted to. I'd look a little. It's a Ralph Lauren a polo suit. I, if I ever meet Ra Ralph Lauren, I'd like to wear it. So <laughs> this I bought this suit in 1983 and it still fits. So right. I think that you know that's the kind of motivation and I think that's the kind of creativity that athletes and um, uh, sometimes uh, ambitious, successful people, you know, that, you know, I, I, want, I want to be buried in that suit. So uh, I got to, I ha you know, I have to stay in shape to... Uh, right, right, right. Uh, and in my case, I'm lazy, and that was one of my problems. It, it, not lazy, but I, I don't work out. I did work out up until 10 years ago, but I stopped, and I haven't been able to get back into it. So I have a, I have a, I have a very healthy, excellent diet. And not, 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 I'm not on a diet. I've established an eating, eating pattern for life, which is, is, is um, you know, just, just very healthy. A lot how, of uh, protein, vegetables, Like, Do you think, yogurt. you know, performance-wise, to be in shape? Huge. For me. That's me. Other people, you know, uh, successful, I always say successful salespeople, and that's where I started in sales, and I still actually, um, I, 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 would consider myself a salesman, uh, notwithstanding the fact I'm, the, I'm an owner, founder, chairman, and CEO of my company. I'm really, I'm really just a successful salesman that sold uh, well enough to uh, to own a company. And uh, right. I, I wouldn't have uh, I, otherwise. I, I wouldn't otherwise have have been able to uh, own a company uh, my size in, in my business in my in the in the in the industry that I'm in. So I think uh, I, I I'll always have that mentality. 
uh, and and it's it's absolutely uh, for me uh, very much uh, sports mentality. Right. Athletic, uh, athletic minded. So moving on to your current business, what made you start the Whitmore Group? Uh, yeah, that was in 1989. I founded the company. Uh, it's actually to, I thought, better serve a niche, uh, which was the original platform upon which I built my company, which was the funeral industry right. niche. I became a, um, for a variety of reasons, uh, I, I, I started to develop a market share in the funeral industry in the New York metropolitan area, and I built uh, uh, enough uh, critical mass that I wanted to, um, the firm I was at, I didn't own, although I had a, a, an equity interest in the accounts that I developed. So I, uh, I wanted to um, uh, tap into the vertical integration of that industry, uh, which meant uh, to write, to do business with more than just the funeral homes, to do business with the monument dealers and the casket companies and the florists and the transportation companies, the limousine companies. So I, 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 I took a chance a big chance and got a little lucky uh, and, and founded my own company too so that I could control the destiny of that company or have a better and, and pursue that niche in a more aggressive way than, than the principals of the firm at the time uh, were interested in. So that's, that's, that was my original platform. So the niche grew? Like the niche grew and I was able to tap into the vertical uh, integration of the niche, but I also started, provide, uh, started to develop other products out uh, in addition right. to commercial property and right. casualty. I developed a homeowners and personal insurance division, health insurance and, and, and estate planning and life insurance. So, and then I started to develop uh, uh, additional niches right. uh, in real estate, construction, uh, fine arts and, and and a number of others. So would you say that's a good strategy for people, like finding a niche kind of opens doors, like if you really find a niche then, yeah. if you do really well in that niche, it'll open doors into other? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big believer in niches. I think, you know, there are there are uh, pros and cons to, to niches as opposed right. to being a generalist, but I think that, you know, that the idea of being a niche player in any, in most industries and many businesses is 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 knowing every square inch of that space right. and 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 studying it and uh, and then developing uh, business synergistically because you know for example in the restaurant industry you know the suppliers you know you know um, you know the chefs you know uh, everyone connected with the business the vendors uh, work together to pursue opportunities and to strengthen strengthen right. existing relationships so uh, you know, there, there's, there's a lot to be said for, for niche. And people, wanna, people want to uh, do business with what they consider experts and, right. and consider uh, people who, who uh, are astute, have astute knowledge of their business, so I think. What are the key factors responsible for the growth of the Whitmore Group? More niches. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, uh, no, I think, I think um, investment, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm continually, uh, reinvesting in my company and, re and, and, and investing in people, trying to find uh, the best and the brightest in my industry and I'm willing to pay them. Right. I think, you know, people are my greatest, uh, right. uh, are my greatest asset, uh, are people. And, you know, people are the ones that do, you know, that really uh, build the relationships with both the insurance companies and uh, the clients. So I, I, uh, I've been willing to invest in, in, in human capital. Right. Sort of like building a sports team. You build Same. Them. Like they say, you know, players win championships and, and coaches lose them. <laughs> Blame the coaches when they lose and, right. and, and the players when they win. Right, so the right, players, right. you know, it's about the, you know, if you don't have the players, you, you can't win. I don't care how great a coach right. you are. So. so when you're hiring, you know, when you're hiring somebody, if someone comes in for an interview, what draws you to a certain person to hire them? What qualities? If they tell me what I want to hear. What's no, what? I'm, well, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I, I think uh, uh, that's a very good question. Um, I, I, I like to hear people speak about, uh, you know, I, I think their attitude, their, their frame of mind, I listen carefully to their experiences at their previous, both uh, where they're at, you know, at the time of the interview as well as prior to that. I, 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 like, I like to listen carefully to uh, to, to, to how much uh, passion uh, they, they, they exude uh, for, for their work. And um, um, 
and 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 I listen, you know, carefully, uh, or try to try to try to uh, uh, discern if they're being sincere, and and uh, uh, see see that that, that they have uh, that they're philosophically in line with me and 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 with my company. Well, how do you recruit new hires and find them? Well, we have a lot of people approach us now, which is which is nice. Right. Um, but there are ways in our industry that we can, you know, we have uh, executive job job uh, placement companies that uh, are are well known in our industry, and we can uh, pursue uh, uh, new new uh, talent uh, v uh, via those relationships. And and then again, we have uh, we talk about the athletics and the, and that theme that we've built. Right. Uh, we have many f uh, former outstanding athletes, competitive athletes, who uh, have embarked upon careers in insurance that contact us. And uh, so that's, we recently brought in an individual who won a national championship at Ithaca College uh, was a, and was an, an All-American football player uh, in the 80s uh, and built a successful career in insurance. And, 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 and um, how, however, uh, this person uh, was drawn to, or whoever uh, uh, connected us uh, after he did some research and, and spent some time uh, 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 looking into the way we do business and, 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 and uh, saw that I was, uh, you know, that I had, draw I had created this, uh, this athletics uh, theme and background. Uh, we, we were able to, uh, I think we had a huge advantage over the competition to bring him into the firm and he's a very successful, so big asset to the firm, Mark Hudak from Ithaca College, is board of the trustees, insurance. yeah, yeah. So you generally athletes are more successful at selling insurance from your experience or not? Or, or is it, you know, is I it think I think they, 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 they often make uh, successful salesmen. I, I wouldn't. I know many uh, who, who are not, uh, right. but certainly um, I, I think that uh, it's, it's an advantage. Talk about team building in an entrepreneurial setup and the key factors involved. Well, team building, I think in, uh, in my business uh, as an insurance broker, having uh, close to 100 employees, um, I think you know, trying to create an environment uh, so that people uh, want to come to work and uh, and also feel that we, pro we when we provide incentive so that people feel uh, that uh, uh, they have an opportunity to grow uh, financially and also uh, in terms of their positions within the company uh, so uh, you know team building has a lot to do they you know people talk about team the chemistry and I think you know that's very important. Successful teams, most successful teams in sports that are, you know, baseball to me is less of a team sport than football. Football, the guys play together. Um, you know, when you're out there um, in baseball, there's one hitter. You know, there's there's the, the fielders can work together, but you're really you're, more, you're out there on your own. However, there are still that that element, guys um, wanting to work together, and guys that. Uh, they don't even have to like each other as much as right. they respect each other, okay. and and so they, you know, they win. You win as a team, and you lose as a team. I think, um, you know, basketball and and uh, lacrosse certainly. Uh, right. Those are huge team sports where the guys you're playing with. I think it's very important that uh, you know you you have uh, good chemistry and and work well together. Um, and How do you get them to do that? Is do you guys? Do, is there like you know? Well, success does together. that. You know, success right. does that. Success breeds that. I think, uh, but uh, I think you know, uh, practice. You know, it starts with practice, and in practice, you work together. And do you have like team building activities? Or everybody goes paintballing. No, <laughs> uh, no. But we do have. They, uh, they, you know, the staff does get together after work at times. I'm not supposed to know about that. But, okay. <laughs> but no, we have company uh, dinners and uh, lunches and. Um, I've always uh, uh, spoke uh, at, at holiday parties, and uh, you know, too much actually. You know, right. I, try to, I try to limit. They put a, they have an over and under on me. But uh, no, I think you know, building a chemistry and a building a, a positive uh, work environment and, and providing incentive is is is, is uh, it does a lot right. uh, to make an organization successful. What would you say? You know, a highlight, the smartest thing you did. In, in your initial years of business or even recently? 
hire people that are smarter than me. Surround myself with people that are oh, smarter yeah. than me. Yeah, that's probably my greatest mm -hmm. <laughs> to recognize that I'm not the smartest guy in the room. Right. So I've hired the smartest guys in the room. What's the most challenging and difficult thing about running a business than owning a business? Overhead. They, a lot of smart business guys say overhead is a killer. You know, so. I think you know you can do a lot of business, but you've got to do more business than you know. You've got to bring in more business uh, than uh, bring in more money than you spend, and sometimes right. that you know uh, that's a challenge. Right. So I think you know keep you have to keep your eye uh, continuously on that ball. You right. Know, to, it's like a score. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you can you know it can be a little deceiving at times. It says people, product, and processes the key ingredients of a successful business. Can you elaborate on this? People, product, and processes. Well, we've been touching on that. I mean, uh, people are my greatest asset, and I think uh, I've gone to great lengths to bring in the best and the brightest in my industry. Um, you know, the process is uh, about, uh, is like practice, you know, with, um, refining that is, a, is an ongoing uh, challenge, but one that we, uh, we constantly uh, evaluate where we're at, how we're doing things, new systems, automation, technology, how we're taking advantage of it, how we stack up to our competition. And um, so on the, on the processing side, what was the third? Product, how important is that? Yeah, well, it's everything. I mean, it's, it's also, you know, your product is, and in my business, product is both, um, you know, how, how, uh, how, you know, we're protecting people's assets. So we, we want to provide the best product at the best price. Right. And um, so it's really all about price and coverage. So we, you know, that, 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 that's pretty much uh, the, uh, the, uh, the synopsis of, right. uh, of, 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 of the business that I'm in and business uh, by and large, I think. Yeah. Those relationships to me are just as important as the clients. Right. Um, we always say, without the clients, then there's no need for desks and, and, and computers and, and people even. Uh, you, you know, the clients pay for all of that. However, um, you're not going to retain the clients without right. highly competent people to, right. To, right. to service and develop those relationships. So what would you say, th what, what are things that make your company better prepared to grab market share versus competition? Better people, you know, hire better people. Um, m much of what we've touched on already, uh, create a, r a real positive environment, uh, reward people who achieve. And I think that, you know, build a, uh, build a great rapport with your staff and, um, you know, we're, most of us are doing business with the same insurance companies and we're pursuing the same markets. However, uh, you know, I, we'll, go, we'll, we'll draw a parallel to sports again. You know, the, the, they are the players, especially, and, the, and your sales force. I mean, the, the salesman, that's still the magic, you know, the ability to access opportunities we have, to, we have to capitalize on those opportunities. That's where the infrastructure comes in and the ability for the people at the highest levels to put deals together. But again, those, those salespeople who have the ability to access opportunities are invaluable, and that's, that is magic. When you think competition, I'm saying like other, the other top insurance companies, say in Long Island or New York City, uh, do you, how do you view competition? Do you feel like competition inspires you and pushes you to want to be better so you can beat them out. Do you have that type of mentality? you think competition is a good thing? Yeah, I think competition is good. I think, um, I think I'm, I'm, I've, I've been doing it so long that I don't need to, you know, I can, I can, I can, um, I welcome competition, but uh, yeah, no, I would say competition for since the beginning of time is 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 uh, is where the rubber meets the road, and it's it's just another way to measure yourself, and uh, and I think you can learn too. You can learn from your competition. Right. You know, you can always learn from your competition in in, right. in business and in sports. Right, right. So say you were were a business coach as of like an athletic coach. What would the t one top tip be for your team? You know, when they're going out, you're giving them that kind of that little pep talk beforehand, your team, your, at your work, at the, your place of business, what would your top tip be? Well, I guess that would have to be, we'd have to refine that a little bit and talk about which area. Um, if we were going out to make a presentation, whether that be for a renewal or to try to 
attain a new account, I think it would be uh, about you know being in control of your emotions and being in control of uh, think before you speak. And, right. and I think in sports, you know, it, it, it's 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 think before you act. Right. Or emotion can be like very detrimental when you're playing right. sports. Right. Right. Try to keep uh, uh, an even keel uh, emotionally. Try to keep on an even keel in business. L listen to uh, what people are saying and uh, don't wait to speak. Really listen to what they're saying and try to address. Uh, those issues and um, so then you're kind of molding and shaping yourself to uh, the prospective client or the client's uh, needs and wants and 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 wait you know and and even in sports you know wait you know wait for your time don't right. don't don't let the game come to you what advice would you have for someone starting their own business say your nephew good luck <laughs> <laughs> it's tougher today I think than ever uh, before, although it's it, most of the startups today are tech, you know, right. tech related. Right. So right. tech's a whole different animal. I, I think again, we talked about overhead before. Overhead's a real issue, and people get over. You know, they, I know a lot of sh successful businessmen, business people, who say, you know, who have who have remarked uh, or made almost verbatim that statement: overhead's a killer. And when I was younger, I would listen to that and think, boy, that's a almost a crude way of, of saying that. But in reality, I think it's, you gotta look at it that way. It, 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 it is a killer. You don't forget it then and you're keenly aware of it. And you know, so people have good ideas and people have the potential to, to be successful. But again, there's a balance. You know, how much do you invest before uh, you make a profit? How much are you willing to invest? And even if you're, you know, there are some businesses that are generating uh, uh, relatively high, uh, high uh, revenue streams, However, uh, they're just, you know, they, 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 their, their expenses, you know, the, 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 right. the margins aren't there. So I, I, think, um, I, I think, you know, often you have a, 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 a someone that, that, that initiates a business or they have a talent or a passion or right. an expertise in a certain area, but they, they you know, that doesn't make necessarily make them a, a, a you know, a good businessman. They may be good at a certain aspect of, of business or in, a, right. in an industry, but not. Um, so you need, uh, I think you have to, you know, it's like a, a puzzle. You need all the right pieces in place or you definitely need the right foundation. And I think you gotta go to fundamentals uh, and, and, and make sure that um, you have, uh, uh, you've really spent uh, a, a necessary time to, 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 to analyze you know, uh, the cost and, and the overhead related to, uh, associated with that, with that business, that idea or that. So you, know. you would, uh, I guess the tip would be research the market, kind of pro-con for like is. Yeah, I, I, I think um, there, yeah, research, uh, there are ways to tap into uh, the um, uh, experiences of, uh, of, of others in your field and in and, and that business and 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 pay clo you know careful attention to that thank you for coming my uh, pleasure you know you're sharing your knowledge with the audience it's very I'm sure a lot of people will get a lot out of it I hope so yeah so you're very it's welcome great it's a pleasure you. to be here see you next time on starter TV